train the muscles, not the joints. Filmmaking shit right here, man. This is a big deal. Alright, a little bit of legs here. See how sore I am from stiff legs this week. the hell's going on man that's a nice that's a pretty shirt you got on there or is it a bra i don't know it's, what, are, what is that what is that that bright blue it's like easter bunny easter bunny blue and how are you doing glenn you've decided to show up for your monthly workout you decided to show up for your monthly workout do a chef cookbook or something on the internet or i don't know something i keep telling you but no you want to work your 14 hour days well, okay well all right I gotta go do legs. I don't wanna do legs, but I gotta go do legs. So welcome back to your Natural Line Bodybuilding. And today I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit about training frequency and does it help with mind muscle connection or neural connection or coordination or whatever. Okay, so uh, today I'm gonna to be doing some squats. So I'm not doing a really big workout. I usually do multiple body parts in a workout, but as you'll see later on in the vlog or, or later on in the workout or whatever you wanna call it, uh, the worky Audi video y audio kind of thing that I filmed in the gym. Yeah, that thing, that thing there. Yeah. A anyway, I'll get around to telling you what happened. But, but the bottom line is, I got to the gym late. Uh, basically, lots of stuff still going on with the move and everything like that. So I basically prioritize what body parts I'm going to train. And tonight, I decided I'm going to train legs and I'm going to concentrate on that. So when I first started training years and years and years ago, back in the dinosaur age, when I was 14 years old, I was doing an upper body workout about three times a week. That's what I was doing. And I was doing only about two to three sets per body part. And I was doing it all in a circuit, which is kind of funny. So that's how I started training. I just did the circuit where I do bench press, then I do some incline curls, and then I would do back, funny enough, I'd do some chin-ups or something. And then I'd move on to lateral raises, and then I'd do one-arm rows. And Anyway, it would continue, and I'd get one exercise in per body part, and then I started adding two exercises in some cases. Uh, but that's really how I started for the first two to three years of my training. Really, I, I bet you two years was really, that's how I started, okay? So it was a little bit higher frequency in some way. But then I went to the bro split at some point. Now it's important to note that I wasn't doing a typical bro split, like just such as just training one body part for a whole day and, and that's it. But what I was doing is splitting the body into three different days. So one day I do legs and calves, another day chest and back, another day I do arms. And so I did that for about three to four years. I just stuck to that type of split, actually probably five to tell you the truth, because I was totally sold on the whole 48 to 72 hours it takes for a body part to recover and I fully believed that and I was like okay you just got to kill the muscle then give it lots of rest you don't want to overtrain but this is how you grow muscle right so that's why I stuck with that so usually you do about two warm-up sets of squats at 25. at some point I noticed something I was in incredibly bad shape every time I trained legs I was always out of breath my cardio was becoming my weak link when I trained legs and also my coordination. I noticed that when I was going down in the squat, my groove was not really centered. It felt like I needed to readjust my groove constantly every time I trained legs and it felt like something was off. And I noticed it was also incredibly uncomfortable. It's almost like I'd sometimes want to not go to the gym at all because I was like, oh my God, legs, leg day. Oh my God, leg day. And I knew this and I hated training legs, but I forced myself to do it anyway. But I noticed that this is so much more painful than everything else. Why is this? So I started to think, geez, you know, maybe if I didn't have to do a 15 set workout or a 20 set workout, maybe if I could just get away with doing a five set workout or six set workout more often, maybe it would be easier to get motivated to go to the gym and train legs. So that's kind of how my higher frequency frequency type of thinking started. Good bum 
burn today. So as I mentioned, you could tell it was it was pretty much cardio related or conditioning related. That's why I decided to do leg training a little bit more often. But an interesting other side effect started to happen. I started to notice that my coordination started to get better. My groove was much smoother. I started to really perfect that balancing. You know, there wasn't so much shakiness going on when I was lifting heavier weights. And I also noticed that my mind muscle connection was extremely deep. Like I was getting these mind blowing pumps in my leg training, as well as all the other body parts that I was training more frequently. So because of this, my strength started to go up, which was really not what I expected. I got the gym a little bit late tonight. Usually I prioritize my chest, back, and legs. That's my main priority. I'll usually concentrate on whatever the big muscle group is that day, and then I'll work on the little or smaller muscle groups as well uh, if I have time, but I make the priority the big one. I came to the gym a little bit late. I was working on some videos and stuff, so because of that, I got an hour, but I want to get in some volume for my legs, so I'm going to do multiple sets for squats and just get the legs going, right? I'll stay a little lighter because I did heavy Romanian deadlifts the other day. The higher frequency had a few different side effects. One was I was in better cardio shape. So whenever I trained legs, my breath was no longer the weak link. Number two, my coordination was better. I noticed that whenever I was under the squat rack or under the bar or even doing bench presses or anything, I noticed that my groove was better. I didn't have to fight the coordination so much. And number three, weights that I had been lifting before that felt heavy started to feel light. It's almost like I had this elasticity in my muscles that were starting to almost drive me right through the movement. So weights were starting to feel very light and my strength was starting to go through the roof. So this was why I started to train more frequently. The frequency was establishing more mind-muscle connection and just the frequency itself, even at higher rep ranges, was increasing my strength. After doing stiff leg a couple days ago, I found when the hamstrings are tight and my squat suffers a little bit, but I still get a good workout. Can increasing the frequency of your training increase your mind muscle connection? And yes, it can. It most definitely can. It helps you perfect the rep. It really helps you practice in perfecting the rep. And by doing so, you become stronger, then you can rep out with more weight. And because you can rep it with more weight, you will put on muscle as well. But your mind-muscle connection becomes very efficient. It's like throwing a baseball. If you only threw a baseball once a week, you would not become very good at throwing a baseball because there's a certain art to throwing. And it's the same thing with a rep. As you do a rep over and over again and practice and train the nervous system to find the most efficient way to move, then over time, you will gain in strength and you will perfect that rep. You will perfect that coordination. And by doing so, you are now able to put more of a load on the body and increase muscle mass because of it. So although the entire plan was all about getting more conditioning so that I could train legs properly and also getting more motivation so that I could train legs in the gym, at some point I started to notice that this frequency was starting to transfer benefits to other parts of my body as well. Every part of my body, it didn't matter whether it was arms or calves or delts or chest, I was getting a lot more of a pump, I was getting more mind-muscle connection and I was getting more results. And because of it, I was also getting in those first five or six sets of a workout which you're more power oriented. You have a lot more anabolic sort of power in the first five or six sets. And I was getting more of those quality sets in a week instead of the endurance sets that you find at around 10 sets or 12 sets or 15 sets for a body part. So in the end, I was actually lifting more poundages. I was getting more volume of poundage done in a week because of this. So 
that was the high frequency happy dance. Okay, just in case you wanted to know what that was. Okay, just a random dance. I gotta do random stuff in my videos just to keep myself happy. Oh yeah, and I just remembered, some of you guys are asking me about the live workout vlogs. Some of you like the live workouts. I kind of stopped doing a lot of the live workouts because I thought it was a little bit lengthy. Maybe it was a little bit too boring for you guys, but if you guys really want it, just make sure you make a comment down below and let me know that you want me to do the live workouts again. Hopefully this video really helped you understand how high frequency can help you connect to the body a little bit more, maybe help you with that mind-muscle connection and increasing your groove during your exercises. And thanks a lot for watching and take care for now. Be even bigger than you are!